Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and yes, this is the only t-shirt that I own. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a badass flaming sword effect all in Photoshop. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see I've opened up an image of a subject holding a sword. Now you can do this with any image and any weapon, but I do find it tends to work better when you have a darker image or a darker background. You just get a much cooler fire glow effect and it looks a little bit more dramatic. Now I've also opened up a fire image in Photoshop. It's important that your fire is on a black background because then we can easily separate the fire from the background at a later step in the tutorial. And you can get fire images from stock imagery sites, Envato Elements is linked in the description, or just do a Google image search for fire and open your fire in Photoshop and go to select all. You'll see the marching ants mark the selection of the entire canvas. Go to edit, copy, switch over to your main document and just go edit and paste. And you can double click the layer text and give this a name. We'll call this master fire so this is our master fire image at full resolution just in case we need it there in future and we can right click duplicate this again and we'll call this one fire and we can now switch off our master fire it's just there in case we need it now because our fire is on a black background we can change the blending mode of this layer from normal to screen and you can see it instantly removes that black background and leaves only the fire and you can use lighten as well, but I find that screen just retains a few more of these particles, cinders, and these little details in the fire. Now the next step is to resize this to fit the sword, and depending on the weapon you're using, if you have like a falchion or a scimitar or something that is much more curved, you may need to spend more time warping this, but, but we'll get to that in a moment. So first of all, go to edit and free transform, and you can now rotate this, or you can scale it down or up, holding shift and dragging from the corners. Now, if you don't hold shift, it will skew out of shape and do something a bit funky like this. So we'll keep shift held so it's nice and in proportion. And just position it over the sword like so, something like this. And you can press return or double click to set that transformation. And then go to edit, transform and warp. And depending on the shape of your weapon, you may find the arc or the arch presets here pretty useful, but we're going to use custom and just grab any of these anchor points or even in the middle here. And we can bend this to fit the shape of our sword. Ours is ever so slightly curved. And you can of course adjust this as you need to. And when you're done, press return to set that transformation. Now at the moment our fire has a very hard edge and we can fix this by adding a layer mask from the bottom of the layers panel and select the brush tool. And from the drop down at the top, just pick one of Photoshop's soft round pressure opacity brushes with a hardness of zero. And you can adjust the size up here or you can quickly adjust the size by using the left and right square brackets on your keyboard. And with black as your foreground color, and the mask selected, just brush around that hard edge. Now this does look a little bit rubbish, but the important thing is that we remove that hard edge because we will be blending these layers together with other fire layers in a moment. Now remember that black removes from the mask. If you remove too much, just press X on the keyboard to swap that round to white, and we can brush back in. So white adds to the mask and black removes from it. Cool, so we've done the first bit of the fire. Next, we're going to right click on our fire layer and duplicate this and drag it out to the right. Now you can see as we go along, we're going to need to use this free transform with the shortcut Command or Control T to adjust the rotation just so it follows the curvature of the sword. And I'm just duplicating again, dragging it out and rotating. So I'm just going to repeat this process until we get to the end of the sword. And 
And there we go, we've reached the end of the sword. So that's not looking too bad. There are a few problems though, because we've just duplicated the same fire image, we have a lot of repetition. So it does look a little bit fake. Now, one thing we can do for this is every other layer, we could just go to edit, transform and flip horizontal and it will flip this round. So we're using that same one fire image, but we're trying to use it in a variety of different ways to create randomness because fire is of course random. So we want to try and replicate that in our composition. However, we now get this crazy symmetry, which is anything but random. So if we then go to edit and free transform, we can of course overlap this because we softened those edges. You can see it blends together really nicely. But again, we have symmetry. So if we press return to set that transformation, this is where the clever bit comes in. We can select the mask on this layer and the brush tool and simply brush out the symmetry. So anything that is replicated. So we have this similar shape here on the fire. So we just have to find the right fire layer. This one here, select the mask and brush away the symmetry. So we've got it again here. So we're just going through all of the different fire layers and trying to brush out any really obvious symmetry. bring that back so you can see we have some symmetry going on here so let's just select the layer mask and just carefully just brush that away so this process or this part of the process is a lot easier if you are using multiple fire images but if you're not if you're only using one then it just takes a little bit more time to create variety in that one image. And as we get to the end of the sword, I think I want this to be a bit smaller. So we can hold down command or control and just grab any of these anchor points and we can actually distort this out of shape a little bit. So I'm just kind of pulling this right edge down and we can bring that back in, watching out for this bit of symmetry or this kind of mess here that is a little bit obvious and of course just brushing that away and you can spend much longer on this just to make sure that your fire effect has as little symmetry as possible sometimes it's even just a case of just gently brushing a few little bits out and it can have a huge difference Okay, and again, we're using that soft opacity brush. So everything we do is really, really subtle. So there we go, not looking too bad at all. We've got a little, little bit here, maybe just adjust that. Fantastic, so we've done the fire for the upper part of the sword and we can now hold shift, left click on the top layer and left click on the bottom layer here and go to layer, group layers, and we'll call this group upper fire and I don't think we need our master fire layer anymore so we can delete that and if we right click on our upper fire group and duplicate this we'll call this group lower fire we've done most of the work so if you do a really good job with the top here in creating randomness and variety in the fire then your lower fire layer is just going to look even better and just drag lower fire underneath and of course this is going to run along the bottom of the sword and I'm going to make this a bit smaller as well so the top part of the sword is more dramatic more pronounced and the bottom part is a bit more subtle so first of all we'll need to go to edit transform and flip vertical and then just use the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge this down and of course you can see the curvature is op the opposite of what it needs to be so if we go to edit, free transform, 
and just hold shift and scale from the corner. We can bring the size down first and then go to edit, transform and warp, 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 warp. nope, we can't warp a group. So we have to go into our group, select all of our layers holding shift and go to layer, merge layers. Now, when you merge layers in Photoshop, there is a good chance that it will reset your blending mode to normal, but that's fine. We just need to change that back to screen and then go to edit, transform and warp on the layer. And we can again warp this manually if we like, or we can go and use arc or arch. And then adjust the properties at the top here, or just grab this anchor point and bend it in real time and then press return to set that transformation. And we can now bring this up here. Something like this. Now we've got a little bit of a whole symmetry thing going on, but just resize slightly. So if we go to edit, transform and flip horizontal again, we're just creating more randomness. And we're going to do the same thing again. Right click, duplicate, and just drag this over here. And I'm just going to flip it round. And as I say, the longer you spend on this, the better your end result will be. So again, we can add layer masks to this and we're just going to brush out as much symmetry as we can. Just noticed a little bit of symmetry but because it's all on a layer mask we can always go through and just brush it out and adjust it okay and a lot of the times it's just making sure you have the right layer selected So there we go, not too bad. And if we twitch off our upper fire layer, I'm going to actually grab the lower fire one and just move this up a little bit and switch back on our upper fire layer. Pretty good, okay. So we've got our two fire layers and we can hold shift and select both of these and then go and group those together. And we'll just call this group fire. And next we can add a new layer and we'll drag this underneath and just pick a bright orangey yellow reddish color of your choice, something up here in the top right corner, nice and vibrant. And we're going to use that brush tool with the feathered brush again and just increase that brush size nice and large. And we're going to add a glow that is going to go over the whole subject or most of the subject's body. So the light coming off from the fire is affecting the subject. So with your brush, just left click and it will look something like this. And we can then change the blending mode from normal to overlay, soft light or hard light tend to work pretty well, but it depends on your image. So this is the part where it's definitely worth having a bit of a play with some of the other blending modes and seeing what works. So I'll try soft light and you can see immediately that enhances the image and we can double click the text there and I'll call this large glow. Now I'm going to repeat this and add a new layer and using the brush tool bring that size down and create a smaller more intense glow particularly around the subject's face and we'll try overlay so much more intense around the subject's face there and I'll call this layer small glow and you can of course adjust the opacity on any of these if you just want to bring a little bit of that intensity down. And I'm also going to add a glow over the subject's hand and this part of the sword. So if I add a new layer, left click here, and because it's a nice soft round opacity, op <laughs> I can't say opacity, opacity, opacity brush, it adds that glow really nicely to the hand and this part of the sword and we can change the blending mode to soft light, add a layer mask, and then with black selected and our layer mask selected, we can just brush out anything over here that affects the subject. 
double click on the layer text and call this hand glow. And if I turn this off and back on, you can see this only affects the subject's hand and this part of the sword. So if I switch those off and back on, you can see we've added a considerable amount of glow to our image as a whole, really. And I might just bring that hand glow down a little bit. And we can add another layer now. And with the brush tool, I'm going to create a bit of an outer glow around the sword overall. So let's just left click and follow the path of the sword and change this to maybe soft light. We could even try screen and then bring the opacity right down. So let's try 10%. Something really subtle, but just so there is a glow coming off of the sword and we can call this layer sword glow. And I'm going to add one more glow layer. And this is with a much smaller brush. And this one just matches the size of the sword. And I'm just going to brush that orange color over the sword as a whole. And maybe just use the eraser tool here on the end. There we go. And then change the blending mode on this one too. We could do soft light. Something like this. So it just enhances that glow running through the sword. And again, I can bring this down a little bit. And I'll call this one sword glow. My mistake, this one here should be outer glow. So there we go, we have all five of our glow layers and we can select these holding shift and group them together. And of course, call this folder glow. And then if we click on our topmost group, the fire group from the adjustment icon at the bottom, we can add a color balance adjustment layer where we can change the tone of the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And we can adjust the color like so. So this is incredibly powerful. We have quite a lot of shadows on our image because it's very dark and we can adjust the overall color of the image just from these few settings. So you can make it much more red, pink like this or go completely the other way all with these sliders. And because this is an adjustment layer, we can double click the thumbnail at any time and have access to these settings. So we have that flexibility. And you can preview this by clicking the eye icon at the bottom. And we can also add another adjustment layer, which is a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And you can of course adjust the hue however you like. We could create something like an ice sword if you really wanted to, but we're going to adjust this ever so slightly. We're going to go for plus six on the hue and if I turn this off and on, you can see it just turns it from a much more orangey fire to a slightly more yellowy one. So there we go. We've got our image. We've added the glow effects. We've added the fire to the weapon. We've added a color balance adjustment layer, a hue and saturation adjustment layer, and we're done. And there we go. That is how to create a totally badass flaming sword effect all in Photoshop. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.